As we get closer to transformative AI, we need to make sure that the risks are mitigated at a global level and also that the benefits are distributed um, throughout humanity. And so we have an idea to do a world convention on transformative AI that would happen after certain pre-committed triggers or thresholds are met. Uh, and uh, we, we don't know how many years in the future this will be. It depends on, um, on when these triggers and thresholds are met. And in advance, we plan to create a working group in order to determine what the threshold of triggers will be and also get pre-commitments among various nation states to attend such a convention. So for our prototype, we have three parts, which we're going to go through one by one. Um, the first is just a, a model of how this organization could be structured. Um, if we, we sort of took inspiration from past constitutional conventions, um, like this uh, negotiations for a new constitution for South Africa in the 90s, or the Indian constitution in the 40s. And what we've learned is that um, although there was one event that led to that constitution being signed, a lot of the work happened years or even decades leading up to that event. And so to prepare for this world uh, convention for, on AI, we need to get started now um, with two work streams. So one would be sort of a diplomatic outreach work stream, sort of like the European Leadership Network or the elders um, doing track 1.5 or track 2 diplomacy. So maybe having really high profile ex-government officials or ex-diplomats who still have connections in their um, national, their respective countries, doing outreach, building support for this um, convention and getting countries to agree to um, a draft agreement on when it should be triggered. And then also a research team thinking about all the really difficult challenges that this convention will face. So when should it be started? What is the red line that we can define that everyone can agree to? Or how should the whole world be represented in this convention? Um, or even maybe some background analysis on sort of governance proposals so that at the actual convention we can make more progress and not have to do a lot of really complex um, discussions right at the convention. So we've uh, drafted an initial agreement that this organization that we're wanting to set up could um, go around um, different, with different governments to convince them to reach this pre-agreement on holding the World Conference or World Convention. It's a, ve it's a very simple uh, uh, initial pre-like draft of an agreement, but includes an obligation to convene when certain thresholds are met and to pause the development of uh, transformative artificial intelligence. Um, it sets out some thresholds for convening. Uh, so what are the what are the uh, the red lines that are crossed in order to bring bring all all the states states parties and uh, stakeholders together, uh, and then sets out some organizational structure around the working group that would prepare the conference, that would uh, study the uh, advances towards meeting those thresholds, and that would eventually convene convene the conference once the thresholds are met, um, and then some concluding. Um, uh, articles that are normally in an in, in, uh, international agreement. Yeah, so how do we get from here to there? I think we think that the first thing would be to get some money from you guys. And then subsequently, <laughs> uh, I think the what we'd be doing is trying to get expert consensus that this sort of pre-commitment mechanism to trigger a convention is the right thing to do. Uh, we'd be getting the organization off the ground. Uh, subsequently, we'd be working on the thresholds uh, with the experts alongside the agreement that Jose just laid out um, and circulating it for comment next year. Following that, we get people to sign on to it. Um, early adopters, we'd be targeting very key states um, and as well as getting sort of informal commitments from key AI labs. Um, once all these adopters sign on to the first draft of the treaty, um, there would be a sort of annual working group meeting which affirms the ongoing process. They'd say, you guys are doing a good job. Seems like you're preparing for the conference. Um, they'd note like which thresh thresholds have been crossed, which haven't. Um, we then try and probably publish a draft conference framework or agenda. Um, this would again allow us to preempt any issues that would come up in the actual conference itself. The closer you do this to the actual conference, I guess the better it would be, the more information we'd have. And finally, sort of question mark, question mark, question mark, whenever the thresholds are breached, that would trigger the convention itself. The idea being that as soon as the thresholds are breached, the convention is pretty soon, maybe like a month or two months um, from, from the triggering. Yeah. We are out of time. Great. Applause. Um, and judges, any questions?
or comments? Yeah, how do you think about the process of gaining consensus on thresholds, just because there is so much divergence even within single states, never mind among states, about what's actually significant? And like traditionally in past processes, often it's a negative outcome that leads to convening. So to get that sort of like prophylaxis in there of when to convene, how are you guys thinking about that? Well, as Stephen laid out, the, our organization would have two main uh, components, and one of them would be the research uh, side of it, which would, um, yeah, carry out, carry out research focusing partly on, on, on these thresholds. Uh, and we've, we've, we discussed that it could be like a one threshold that's been met or a cumulative or an accumulation of several thresholds that could be met that then trigger the, 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 the conference or convention. And then the other branch of the organization, the diplomatic branch, would then have to do the job of um, trying to convince governments around the world and other stakeholders that these are the thresholds that, are, that, that matter. Um, and one, one uh, potential structure that we, that we discussed is uh, having national champions in every country around the world uh, trying to convince the governments to, to, t to take this on, for example. Uh, and there are, there are examples uh, of this working in the past as well. Um, yeah, I don't know if you want to say something more. Yeah. Any other comments? Yeah. Um, what if the thresholds are crossed sooner than 2028? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the timeline is illustrative. I think we'd work faster than that. Um, but yeah, I think like the ideal case would be we set up the thresholds pretty soon. Um, and they're like concurrent work streams on the threshold as well as the, the convention. So I guess that the, the the situation where we run into trouble is like we publish thresholds, um, thresholds are crossed, but we don't quite have the convention, right? Um, so yeah, I think this would be like a failure mode we need to watch out for. So we probably need to start drafting a provisional version of the uh, convention agenda alongside the thresholds. Yeah. How do you think about the trade-off between getting a s small number of the major powers to agree something that looks a little bit more like the UN Security Council? Uh, as opposed to, you know, 192 member states. So that that's that would clearly be more legitimate. Um, but it, but I'm wondering, particularly if there's a sense of urgency, could even uh, you know bilateral agreement between U.S. and China or U.S. China and Europe represent a major step forward? Um, yeah, I think we haven't thought much about that trade-off. Um, I think most of us see this as sort of some quite aspirational um, guiding light to aim for. And maybe it doesn't work in all scenarios or it needs to be adapted in um, like really short timelines or other certain like as other risks become clear, like adapting this. Um, but I think it's clear that maybe this solution or none of the projects here will work for all potential futures ahead of us. Um, and, and what we're aiming for with this is something much more inclusive encountering or taking account of not just mitigating the risk, but also like trying to figure out how are we going to decide where to aim um, humanity or aim this TAI if we get through the, the risk gauntlet. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, more comprehensive, I'd say. Yeah. And one, one more thing I would add there is that I don't see it as a major trade-off necessarily in that if you don't get the United States and China to agree on the thresholds, it's unlikely that the rest of the world will come because those two major powers kind of like have, the, have, have a lot of influence over the rest of, of, of actors, then um, once you get to, once you convince the US and China, it's, it's likely that the rest of the, of, of the world will come along. Um, so not necessarily a huge trade off, yeah. Great, thank you so much. Um.